As people coming alive, man, please share this video. I'm going to try to see if some people up online. I'm trying to see, if, you know, who's going to come on this live so we can talk a little bit about this video and this song. So when you come on this live, please share this video so more people can see this video. And I'm hoping Glasses Malone, I hope you online, brother. We got a lot to talk about, bro. With that rap video you just put out, and that song you just put out called Tupac Must Die. We're going to talk about this, this rap song in this video. So as you come on this live, please share this video. I'm not going to take too much of your time. I'm just going to, you know, you know, give my critical feedback on this video and song. You know what I'm saying? It seems like, you know, we all know Tupac Shakur is a controversial, you know, figure, freedom fighter, hip hop artist. You feel me? Shakur tribe all day long. You know what I'm saying? But it seemed like a lot of, you know, I don't want to say, you know, weirdos type of shit going on but at the end of the day let me just state this good morning to you all hell biafra all hell to my biafran people shout out to biafra you know i always got to give a shout out to biafra man shout out to b africa shout out to all my brothers and sisters in africa shout out to all the brothers and sisters in the caribbean islands the diaspora you know all across the globe all african people new african people shout out to you today you know what i'm saying if you can you know hang on and you know with this live, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna take up too much of your time. I'm gonna just hop into it real quick, you feel me? Because, um, and don't get it twisted, you feel me? Share this video, you know what I'm saying? So we can, you know, really discuss this topic. It's storming where I'm at, so I hope, I hope the feed stay clear and I hope this video stay clear as I try to, you know what I'm saying, clarify a few things when it comes to Tupac Shakur's, you know, untimely, uh, demise and transition to the ancestral realm, you feel me? So I just want to clear up a few things on that note because, you know, you know, when it comes to people like Tupac Shakur or any of our great brothers and sisters, our, you know, our freedom fighters, you know what I'm saying? Somebody, our people who stood on something, who stood for something, you feel me? We always got to, we always got to maintain and hold up their legacy. And part of holding up their legacy is defending their legacy. So anytime something controversial come out, it's the duty of the people, you feel me, to respond. It's the duty of, of, of new African people, new African revolutionary nationalists, or, you know, just freedom fighting and black loving people to defend our great ones, you feel me? And, you know, um, the brother Glass of Malone, and, and this is the thing I want people to understand from the jump as I go into this video is the fact that Glass and Malone is, is a great brother. He's a good brother. You know what I'm saying? He He's a real one that I rock with. He rock with me. I rock with him. So this ain't no video bashing Glasses Malone for the video and the song that he put out. This is just a response to, you know what I'm saying, coming in the defense of that legacy you see what i'm saying the tupac shakur legacy the shakur legacy you know because we're, we're not going to let one one side of the story be told just because a lot of people think um see this this is the problem a lot of people think tupac's whole story has been told his whole story hasn't been told as far as that night of his assassination you feel me and we're not going to let tupac shakur's death we're not going to let Tupac Shakur's death be belittled to um, what they call a random act of gang violence. This is something that we're not going to let happen, people, because we know, if, if, you know, if you are a, a true freedom fighting, uh, 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 you know, a person who's about revolution and you're 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 a new African revolutionary nationalist, you know better than that. Or if you just a, a, a you know an African freedom fighter or a freedom fighting brother and sister, you know better than that. You know what I'm saying? You know Tupac Shakur assassination wasn't just a gang violence, uh, typical gang violence murder. You feel me? So I'm gonna clear that up today. Let, let me just start it off. Let me let me start. A lot of you probably just seen the quote that I posted on my timeline. So let's just start this beautiful video off on this note from 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 Asada. Let's get Asada's uh feedback on hip hop. You see what I'm saying? I, and I tagged my brother in the post cuz I want my brother and this is the thing about it. Me and my brother always talk. We talk offline. 
You know what I'm saying? Glasses Malone is a great brother, man. So don't let don't let this little video uh kind of deteriorate from what that brother, you know what I'm saying, you know, brings to the table for black people cuz this brother is a real brother. He do a lot, you know what I'm saying? And he's one of the, you know, uh, how can I put it? He's one of those artists that's in the industry that's not bougie. He's not bourgeois. He's not Hollywood. You feel me? And let me clear this for the record. The brother loves Tupac Shakur. So don't don't get it twisted just because you might not agree with the record that he just put out, the video he just put out. This brother loves Tupac. He sees Tupac as a goat when it comes to hip-hop music. You know what I'm saying? We always talking about Tupac offline and things of that nature, building. You know what I'm saying? Iron shopping iron. You feel me? But... This is something he felt he had to do, I guess, to, um, you know, to give the side of the story coming from the other side of the tracks, which is from, you know, the street culture, gang banging. You feel me? So he wanted to tell that side of the story. I, hey, I, you know, when it comes to hip hop and when it comes to art, you see what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not, I can't control what people put out. You feel me? People put out what they want to put out. You feel me? And they stand strong on what they put out, even right or wrong. You see what I'm saying? It, it, I, I, but my thing is this. I think it, a lot of stuff in this day and time has to be tasteful. You feel me? When you're speaking on certain people, it has to be tasteful. You see what I'm saying? Not saying that what he, the video and the song he put out, not saying that it's distasteful to that point. Because it could have been way more disrespectful than I think people are overreacting to the song. You see what I'm saying? Like the song isn't, it's not a diss record. You see what I'm saying? So let's just put that out there. The the Glasses Malone song and video, Tupac Must Die, is not a diss record. He's not dissing Tupac. He's speaking from the point of view of he's a crip. You see what I'm saying? Glasses Malone comes from the cripping culture. So he's coming, he's trying to put the side of the story out of the so-called alleged uh, murderer of Tupac Shakur. And I'm going to always say alleged, you feel me, because... At the end of the day, like I said, and he knows how I feel about this type of stuff. We discuss this stuff all the time. And, the, and he knows, I know, he knows my opinion on Orlando Anderson. He know that I know Orlando Anderson, my opinion, and from what I know for facts, was a patsy. He, 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 was, a, he was a pawn in Tupac's assassination. He wasn't what, you know what I'm saying, people trying to, you know what I'm saying, make it out to be far as, you know, with this game banging thing. You feel me? So let me just start this video off, just live off with this. This is what the great Asada Shakur said about hip hop. She said, hip, hip hop can be a very powerful weapon to expand young people's political, social consciousness. But just as any weapon, if you don't know how to use it, if you don't know where to point it or what you're using it for, you can end up shooting yourself in the foot or you can end up killing your brothers and sisters. And that's not really talking about physically killing them. You see what I'm saying? It's about, you know what I'm saying, mentally killing our brothers and sisters with the with the message that you're putting out in your music. You feel me? And, and, and the message that certain records are sending to our brothers and sisters. So again, what I started to state was that hip-hop can be a very powerful weapon. And we know this for a fact because we know about um, hip-hop in the stages of the 80s and the early 90s. When we had more of a balance, you know what I'm saying, a balanced hip hop, you know what I'm saying, movement. It was more balanced in the 80s and the 90s because we had more artists that was more consciously um, social and politically conscious back then. You feel me? Along, you know, along with what you call the street raps, street hip hop and things of that nature, the brothers and sisters that um, um, was into gangster rap. You feel me? So, um it was more balanced back in the day. So you had groups like Public Enemy, X-Clan, you see what I'm saying? BDP, I mean, you know, all the type of conscious hip-hop that a lot of y'all probably like, like Tribe Call Quest, all those type of, you know, hip-hop cats who wasn't really talking about street raps, you see what I'm saying? And that quote from Masada is more relevant today than it was yesterday because we see the, uh, the off-balance of the hip-hop world right now it's one-sided you see what i'm saying all we see in, in the hip-hop um, world right now is more negative destruction um messages in the music right you feel me like it's a lot more drugs murder uh sexual oppression sexual abuse 
Um, I cannot put it dehumanizing black women, new African women, dehumanizing them. You feel me? Um, black men, new African men, dehumanizing each other. It's kind of like, and I don't want, and I like to say this. I don't like to say that it's at an all time high because you got to understand even back in the nineties, hip hop still had its problem with deaf culture being spreaded through the rap music because we had, a, we, we had to, we got the gangster rap genre. You feel me? And a lot of gangster rap music, don't get me wrong, it had a lot of ignorance in it. But at the same time, a lot of gangster rap music back in the day did have messages. It had balanced messages. They made sure to put that message in the music. You feel me? I ain't trying to get too much off of talking about hip hop, but I'm just trying to, you know, point that out with the quote that Asada stated. And I hope the brother Glasses Malone read that uh, that quote from Asada so he can understand that. Let me just go ahead and break my critique down on the song. And, I, and I'm going to just go ahead and start off on the negative critiques of my opinion of this record. Because to me, at the end of the day, you can get positivity out of it. I see where he was trying to go with trying to uh, bring awareness to the, the psychology, um, the mentality of street tribes, the mentality of, of, of new African black people, new African youth who joined street tribes like the Crips and Bloods. He was trying to uh, he was trying to translate and express a message coming from the psycho the, the psychology and the mental capacity of the alleged shooter. You feel me? And I'm not going to speak his name too much because I don't feel like I have to speak dude's name too much because I'm not even trying to give dude a platform at this point because like I said the dude was a patsy to me he was a to me he was an agent you feel me because we have a lot of evidence that um these organizations were infiltrated by um the LAPD uh the FBI um um CIA you feel me like these uh, it, it was a lot of things going on in that time period back then where these people were infiltrated. And I'm going to break all this down and I'm going to compare it to things that happened back then when COINTELPRO first started to attack. You see what I'm saying? Um, leaders, potential leaders, potential. And I don't like to use this word too much, but this is what J. Edgar Hoover stated. Uh, black messiahs. You see what I'm saying? So let me just put that out there for the record. At the end of the day, let me just give my critique on this record. First of all, the first mistake Glass and Malone made in putting this record out uh, is it, the title. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing all on social media how people are so upset about Glasses Malone title of the song. And if you don't know what the title of the song is, if you haven't seen the video, I put the video in this last description. Um, in the in the caption, I put the link in the caption. So if you want to go check out the video and give your own critical analysis about this video and give your opinion about this video, you can watch the video by tapping the link inside this description box, um, uh, inside the caption. You can go watch the video. My first problem with with this record, with this with this video, is the title of the song, "Tupac Must Die." Hmm. And like I said, I love this brother. I I know what this brother this brother's a deep concepting artist. But that title from the get go was a no no. You see what I'm saying? It was an error from the jump. You feel me? Like, why would you name a song "Tupac Must Die"? You see what I'm saying? What's the what's the positivity or the message that you're trying to translate off a title called "Tupac Must Die"? No human being must die you see what i'm saying so that's what i'm saying uh with this deaf culture and the way that we were being raised and the, the way that we came up in america this capitalist imperialist country of america has indoctrinated black people to accept deaf culture like it's normality it's not a normality man you know what i'm saying murdering a human being is not normal it's abnormal you feel me that's that's not normal culture you see what I'm saying? So for you to call a song, Tupac must die. And I understand what you're trying to say, brother. You, you're trying to say this is the mentality that the alleged shooter was thinking because he comes from a gangbanger culture. And the gangbang culture is retali retaliation, revenge, and get back. I understand that because I participated in that. I come from that. So I understand the psychology 
and the translation that you're trying to make with this concept in the song by saying that, okay, the alleged shooter was thinking this. You see what I'm saying? But at the same time, you're 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 defaming, brother. You 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 uh you 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 you're blaspheming somebody's character. You 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 know what I'm saying? You're destroying somebody's character. You feel me? By saying that a person must die. You see what I'm saying? And then when you you speaking on a person like Tupac Shakur, who means so much to new African people. You feel me? To black people, period, and people in the world, period. This is the thing people don't understand. Tupac was more than rap music. This brother set a bar. He reached a level of iconship in this country. You feel me? So when a when a person reaches a status of, of an icon status, and not just on ignorance, you see what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of people do, uh, how can I say it? I do know a lot of brothers and sisters were attracted to Tupac's um, more lower self, if you want to put it in that context. His 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 thugging, his his street uh attitude, his street um bravado, you see what I'm saying? If you want to call it that. I know a lot of brothers and sisters were attracted to that. But what I'm saying is to you that Tupac elevated past the status of just that street side to him. You see what I'm saying? Because that's not, you know, that's not how his life began in his social development. He didn't he didn't start in the streets. He didn't start as a street dude. You see what I'm saying? He comes from a revolutionary movement. He comes from a movement. You see what I'm saying? And through his period of developing until he be until who and what he became as a as as a, as a new African, you know what I'm saying? Man in this country, he surpassed that level of just ignorance. You feel me? Even though, like I said, and I always got to make this point because none of us is perfect in this country due to the system that we live under and the and and the way of life that we're coming from because we are oppressed people. You feel me? So no new African man or woman is perfect. Tupac Shakur was not a perfect human being. This is not what I'm trying to say. This is what a lot of people with common sense is not trying to say. We know Tupac made mistakes. You see what I'm saying? I done had plenty of conversations with Matulu. You know what I'm saying? About writing Matulu and, and, and chopping it up with um, my fellow people in the Shakur tribe. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of them look at Tupac Shakur like he was a perfect human being. They they critic they critically um evaluated Tupac at all times. Matulu always critically evaluated Tupac and would tell Tupac that. You feel me? So nobody's holding Tupac on a perfect pedestal. Let's just get that clear. Tupac fell victim to a lot of contradictions when it comes to the street culture. We know this as a fact. You feel me? You see what I'm saying? He's not he was not a perfect human being. You see what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, through his social development and coming from this movement, you see what I'm saying? Coming from the movement, being a a a, a child of rebellion, a child of of revolution. You you see what I'm saying? Being born inside the prison system, not really being born there but being conceived inside the prison system. He he was developed inside chaos. He was developed inside the prison system. You see what I'm saying? So he came into this world as a rebel. He came into this realm as a rebel. You see what I'm saying? And he and he tried his best to reach his potential. You see what I'm saying? Just wasn't perfect. He's not perfect. Nobody was perfect. None of our great heroes was perfect. You see what I'm saying? Malcolm X wasn't even perfect. Because we all know Malcolm X came from Detroit Red to, to, to Malcolm X. You feel me? A lot of our greatest ideological freedom fighters came from a major culture of street culture. You see what I'm saying? George Jackson, uh, Lumumba Shakur. Um, I can run down a whole list of our great street, our straight, our, our, our freedom fighters who were once street combatants. You see what I'm saying? San Yuka Shakur, Master Cody, who, I, who, who, who still, you know, we still struggling to develop ourselves in this, in this chaotic capitalist country. You feel me? So, Let's just get that clear. Tupac wasn't a perfect person, man. So, yes, he fell victim to a lot of street culture and a lot of thug life, if you want to put it in that context as well. So, that right there, I think, was the major mistake that Glasses Malone made um, when he put this record out and he put this song out was the title. The title automatically would rub a lot of people in the wrong way, especially Tupac fan. If you know Tupac fan base, 
and Tupac supporters, you know that they're going to get upset. If any person, I don't care who it is, put out something against this man and it's not positive or it's not seen in a good light, they're going to get rubbed the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? And I know I know the brother had good in, good intentions when he put the record out, but I just think you should have changed that title before you put that record out. That's just my personal opinion. I don't think you should have named it Tupac uh, Must Die. And then you went on and tried to play off it. You see what I'm saying? Y'all got to bear with me. Y'all have to bear with me like it's, it's really thundering and lightning where I'm at right now. I'm trying to see if the lights, the light, you've seen the lights flickering. <laughs> shout out to Shango, by the way. Shout out to, shout out to, uh, you know, uh, Baba Shango, because we know uh, the elements of nature, you feel me, is, you know what I'm saying, thundering and lightning is Baba Shango. And in the Igbo culture, we call him um, Amadioha. You see what I'm saying? Which is the thunder and lightning deity. So all praises to the, you know, those uh, natural spiritual elements of nature. You feel me? As I continue with this video, man. Um, the title, the title of the song was, was I, I feel like a straight no-no. Because at the end of the day, brothers, this, this, brothers and sisters, this is what I'm trying to make. The reason I'm making this live video is this, is that, um, how can I put it? Matter of fact, let me continue on with more critiques with this with this record. Let me let me just go ahead with this with this record. I felt like this. If you're going to do a record uh, on that level, talking about that type of topic, I feel like you have to cover all angles of your subject matter. And what do I mean by covering all angles of the subject matter? Tell the whole story. Okay, I know a lot of people want to say they heard they they tired of hearing. Um, just the, the story of Tupac Shakur being a sad, you know, being murdered. Tupac Shakur this, Tupac Shakur that. So let's talk about Orlando's side of the story. I feel like this. Um, these two brothers are always going to be connected for the rest of our days on this planet. So I feel like if you're going to do a record on that level, in order to be respectful on both sides of the fence and be, respect, be respectful to the Shakur family, be respectful to the Shakur uh, fan base, supporters, and things of that nature, not to rub them wrong, you have to tell the complete story. Don't half-step the story, brother. You shouldn't have half-stepped it. If you knew you was going to make a record telling the story on, 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 on this side of the alleged shooter, you should have told that person's side of the story, Tupac's side of the story, and that, and what would have made it a, a better record and a well received record, and I and I and I've been telling a lot of people this the last couple of days, um, you should have ended it with a record talking about, and I don't even like to call it conspiracy no more because I know for a fact this brother was assassinated. You should have ended the third. You should have made a third a third part to this record stating the governmental participation. The uh, law enforcement participation theory of Tupac being assassinated. That would have made this um, record be w way more well received. Because now you told the complete story. You didn't half step it. You didn't, you didn't be biased by just be identifying with um, the lead shooter side of the story, which was, you know, the cripping culture. You feel me? Like, it shouldn't have been just one sided. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can't just tell one side of the story when it comes to Tupac's assassination. You can't tell, You matter of fact, you cannot even tell one side of the story when it comes to the alleged shooter side of the story. You feel me? Because like I keep telling this brother, this whole, um, this whole incident, this whole um, drama when it comes to the Tupac Shakur um, assassination is bigger than hip hop. It's bigger than gang banging. You see what I'm saying? And why am I saying this? I'm saying this is because we all know, and the ones that don't know, you need to do your research and get up on this type of stuff, is the fact that we know Tupac was being targeted by Pro, Even though Pro in this time and period of time didn't go by the name Pro, the counterintelligence agencies, the counterintelligence program continued 
It didn't just end with the black liberation struggle of the 60s, 70s, and the 80s. And the counterintelligence program most definitely did not end on the Shakur family. You see what I'm saying? Like the Shakur family has been targeted since day one of the struggle. Lumumba Shakur, example. Lumumba Shakur was killed in 1984, uh, 1985. It might have been 1987. I always get the date a little confused. But if I got the date, if I got the year confused, uh, excuse me, but just was was murdered, was assassinated between 1985 and 87. In on him going underground, when he was in Louisiana, they sent a snitch, an agent, an informant. And this informant murdered Lumumba Shakur in cold blood. Shot him from behind. Murdered Lumumba Shakur. Um, Zaid Shakur. In the case of Zaid Shakur and um, um, Asada Shakur and Sandiata Akolai. You know what I'm saying? On the highway. On the New Jersey Turnpike. The, these agents. The, these law enforcement, um, um, law enforcement officers murdered, assassinated Zaid Shakur in cold blood assassinated him and even all the you know what i'm saying um the rest of the tribe the rest of the um um family and the rest of the movement and the, the comrades these they were being targeted from the 1960s to the 1980s so this is the only thing i'll be trying to explain to this brothers that you cannot keep leaving out the fact that tupac shakur was a descendant of the movement and he was targeted by the government through his whole Look, this is the thing people don't get, man. Before, when Tupac Shakur became famous, when he got into the music business, this is when he first got a jail record. This is when he started to be surveilled by uh, FBI, police, and all their, you know what I'm saying, reactionary uh, law enforcement agencies. They started following this brother soon as he dropped his first record and when he dropped and, and, and when he appeared in his first movie there were random attacks he were he was attacked in oakland um beat up in oakland by the police oakland department you see what i'm saying that's why you see the picture with tupac face all bruised up beat up and battered the police beat the living hell out of tupac shakur in the early 90s and the late 80s you see what i'm saying and this wasn't by coincidence this is what people don't understand. This was not by coincidence. You see what I'm saying? It was no coincidence to this. This was a targeted attack. There were several occasions where Tupac Shakur was attacked by police. To the point one time he had, you know, uh, he had to defend himself on several occasions against the police. And he even helped out random Africans who were getting beat up by the police. And I know y'all pretty sure y'all know all about the case when he shot the two police officers. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Like, even after that incident, when it, that would really, that really ramped up the surveillance and the counterintelligence program that was being ran on Tupac after he shot those two police officers. Like, in, in, in one incident, we believe that when Tupac Shakur was attacked in the Quad Studios in New York City, that was a coordinated attack by the counterintelligence and the New York Police Department. Facts. You see what I'm saying? And, it, and and the sad thing about it is the fact that too many people don't understand the counterintelligence program, and the, and and they don't know, and, and and it's sad that these people they look at Tupac Shakur as a great rap artist, a great this, a great that, but they don't look at the aspect of his revolutionary influence. You see what I'm saying? His potential revolutionary influence on black people and on the youth you feel me and the fact that he was being targeted they they overlooked that and i feel like glasses malone i feel like you overlooked that even when we talking about that i feel you can't overlook that my brother because we know um from the get-go that the shakors have been targeted by the fbi for assassination man hell even all their comrades a lot of them was murdered a lot of black panthers were murdered Woman and male. Sandra Pratt is another case that we can use that counterintelligence was being ran. They murdered um, Geronimo Pratt's pregnant wife in California, in L.A. Pregnant. Dumped her body on the highway. Murdered this sister. Long live Sandra Pratt. 
of the Black Panther Party, the Southern California Black Panther Party. This sister was murdered in cold blood by law enforcement agencies and COINTELPRO. Everybody around this circle has been targeted by COINTELPRO and the FBI. So how is it far-fetched that counterintelligence wouldn't take advantage of a situation that was brewing in the hip hop industry. And let me get to this point right now. Now that I'm bridging it to this point, why why would it be far fetched that counterintelligence program wouldn't use the hip hop beef between the East Coast and the West Coast to assassinate Tupac Shakur? How is that far fetched? And they and, the, and like I'm always telling this brother Glass and Lone, you don't even see it. The fact that they use the gang um, feud, they use the gang feud as the cover to assassinate this brother. That's facts. You see what I'm saying? A lot of y'all don't want to uh, 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 agree with it, but that's facts. Because we've seen this happen from time and time over and over again since the black liberation struggle started, since the black liberation movement started. We've seen how counterintelligence coordinated assassinations, man. And like I said, I said this quote, and a lot of people have been sharing this quote. And, 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 you know, reposting this quote. The East Coast, West Coast rap feud that was pumped up all through European media in the 90s was nothing but a rerun copy of the Black Panther Party East Coast, West Coast feud. They have the same elements. You see what I'm saying? And that and, and, and when the East Coast... Um, Black Panther Party and, and uh, West Coast Panther Party feud started, it was used the same way they did on Biggie and Tupac. They used European media. We know European media is nothing but the CIA, CIA counterintelligence media. This is facts. This is one of their strongest weapons is media, the news outlets, the magazine outlets. All these magazine and news media outlets is ran by CIA counterintelligence agencies. Facts. This is pure facts. And all you have to do, and I'm telling all my brothers and sisters today, all you have to do is study the East. If you want to understand Tupac's assassination and you want to understand how that whole atmosphere came together and how it was used against this brother to get this brother assassinated, study the East Coast Black Panther Party and the West Coast Black Panther Party feud. When Huey P. Newton and Eldridge Cleaver big, uh, fell victim to the counterintelligence program. You see what I'm saying? And they did this to, 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 to get Panthers to kill each other off. And it, and, it, and it worked to a certain degree because a lot of Black Panthers started killing each other. Doesn't that doesn't doesn't that remind you of the aftermath after Tupac was assassinated when the Crips and the blood started killing each other in Compton? Same scenario, same reran counterintelligence divide and conquer strategy. After the counterintelligence and program was ran on Huey P. Newton to get him to beef with Elgis Cleaver, Elgis Cleaver, the Black Panther Party split. It split. This is where the Black Liberation Army comes from. Because when that party split from that um, counterintelligence program that was ran on the Panther Party and um, on the East Coast and the West Coast, this is where the Black Liberation Army came from because a lot of brothers and sisters on the East Coast went underground because you had West Coast Panthers or let me throw this in here so, so I can make the connection with Park assassination is that the FBI took advantage of chaos. They took advantage of the smokescreen they orchestrated on the East Coast Black Panther Party and the West Coast Black Panther Party. Their agents, because a lot, and this is the one thing you have to understand, agents infiltrated the black panther party people that look just like everyday people street people the fbi hired these agents to infiltrate the black panther party to destroy the black panther party from the inside and out and after they after they ran that cointel um run on the east coast panther party and the west coast black panther party you had agents on both coasts pulling off assassinations, trying to assassinate the leadership of the Black Panther Party. Many brothers were murdered. The brother the brother who who created the Black Panther Party was murdered due to this counterintelligence 
um, divide and conquer that was ran on both parties. The brother Napier. If you don't know who the brother, if you don't know who brother Napier is, the one who ran the Black Panther Party paper, he was assassinated by an agent in the Black Panther Party. An uh, agent who joined the Black Panther Party. Facts. Go study this shit, man. Go look this shit up. I ain't telling you nothing false. This is real information. This is what I have learned. It has been passed down to me on what happened to our elders in the 60s, 70s, and 80s when they had this counterintelligence program ran on them. The same scenario. Listen to what I'm saying. The same scenario. They ran the counterintelligence program to create an East Coast, West Coast, Black Panther Party feud that ultimately destroyed the Black Panther Party. 20-something years later, in the 1990s, all of a sudden, a East Coast, West Coast rap feud between uh, Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls was orchestrated and ran on both of these brothers. This is the stuff that these gangbangers don't want to talk about, bro, because they're not educated on this shit. You see what I'm saying? They don't want to talk about it. They just want to belittle this whole um, tragic event to street violence, gang violence. No, my brother, you got to go look deeper than that. This wasn't, um, and, 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 and as I get into this, let, let me just run down the assassination rules. Because this is one thing you got to understand on how the FBI and the counterintelligence program works. The assassination rules to destroy a black leader. What are the, fa what are the six rules to assassinating a person? Rule number one is take out communications. Rule two, take out weapons. Rule three, set up an escape and a patsy. What is a patsy? Set up an escape and a patsy. What is a patsy? Patsy is the alleged. You see what I'm saying? I don't really want to speak his name. A patsy is what that cat, that so-called killed Tupac Shakur that night. That's what he was. He was a patsy. Meaning he was a, he was a counterintelligence individual used as the as the person to blame and put the blame on on the person who murdered this man to make it look like something that it really wasn't that's what a patsy is and that's what and i'm gonna say his name orlando anderson he was a patsy just like lee Harvey Haw lee Harvey oswald you, we, we all know how the lee Harvey oswald thing happened you see what i'm saying he was a patsy we all know that he didn't murder such and such he didn't assassinate that man. He was a patsy. He was the person that they put it on. You see what I'm saying? Used as a counterintelligence dummy. You see what I'm saying? And all throughout history, we had these patsies. You see what I'm saying? That in, that was implemented, implemented in major assassinations. They did it with Martin Luther King. They did it with John F. Kennedy. You see what I'm saying? Don't take my word. Go look this shit up. They did it with all... Fred Hampton, you see what I'm saying? They did it with his assassination. They always have to have a fall guy to make the situation look like how they want to make the murder look. This is what counterintelligence is. It's called low intensity warfare. If you ever hear Matulu talking about low intensity warfare, our great elders fell victim to low intensity warfare. You see what I'm saying? And in many cases, they fell victim to high intensity warfare where it was visible. Low intensity warfare is when it's invisible. You don't know where the assassination is coming from. It's coming from a counterintelligence groups, um, special trained assassin groups or a special trained assassin. You see what I'm saying? And Orlando Anderson fits the bill because he was already a criminal. He was already a street product, a lumping. You see what I'm saying? He was already somebody that they could use to uh, make it look like he assassinated or he assassinated Tupac Shakur. Because this is my theory. And I always stated this from the jump. Anybody who talked to me about this, I believe Orlando Anderson was sent to the MGM that day to kill Tupac Shakur anyway. I believe he was sent there. Because one, you got to understand and look at the evidence. The evidence is this. This, um, the Southside Crips, Keefe D, the, the snitch, the informant, the rat, Keefe D, the uncle of Orlando Anderson. These cats claim they came to Vegas to watch the Mike Tyson fight. But the but from pure undisputable evidence, the, the, the alleged shooter of Tupac Shakur never went in the fight. 
You see what I'm saying? He never put. He never went in the fight to watch the Mike Tyson Selden fight. He never looked at. He never went in inside um, where the ring was to watch the fight. He never went in. He was roaming around the MGM the whole night, and and then you know what I'm saying when they did attack him, when the when the Death Row organization did attack him, he was at the other end of the MGM. And this is what this quote unquote pig said is that he was at the other end of the MGM looking like he was in a day's world. What does that sound like? Does that don't that sound like the same cat that murdered Robert F. Kennedy? Remember, Robert F. Kennedy was under psychosis. He was in a psychological state when he murdered Robert F. Kennedy, the patsy that killed Robert F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, brother. You see what I'm saying? He was hypnotized. He was under hypnosis. And this is in written statements by the pigs of LAPD and Vegas PD that this cat looked like he was in the days. He was in a, he was in a, a it looked like he was in a hypnotic stage because he was at the end of the MGM doing nothing by himself. His uncle and them and the rest of the South Side Chris wasn't even around his brother. So why were you there? I always bring this up to the gang members. I always bring this up to the gang bangers. Why was he in Vegas that night? He had... I know the excuse is that he was there to see the Mike Tyson fight, but he never went in the Mike Tyson fight. So why was he there? Why did he attend the fight? You see what I'm saying? So his whole MO fits a patsy. This is what a patsy is. Let me continue to run down the steps, the assassination rules. Number four, give the victim um, false sense of security. This is how you get a person to assassinate. Um, number five, Make And this is the most important rule in assassination rules that you need to pay attention to, and it's written all over the Tupac assassination, is that make the shooting appear as it was a random act of violence. Let me repeat that again. Rule number five. When, they're, when the FBI and counterintelligence program are trying to assassinate somebody that they're trying to get rid of, the number five rule is make the shooting appear as if it's a random act of violence. That that's where the gang, the gang, the whole gang theory comes into play. This is where the counterintelligence program, the FBI, the LAPD, the Compton PD, this is where they bring this is why you keep seeing this gang theory being forced on our minds. They're trying to brainwash you, hypnotize you to belittle this whole assassination down to a gang violence random act. Bullshit. Bullshit. Don't fall for the typical gang violence. Um, the, don't fall for the typical bullshit story of this was a, a just a random gang act of violence. Don't fall for it, man. Don't fall for it. And the reason why you should never fall for it, the reason why you should never fall for it is the fact that what I just told you, what happened with the Black Panther Party when they had the counterintelligence program ran on them and they had all these random shootings by agents making it look like East Coast Panthers were murdering West Coast Panthers and it was making it look like West Coast Panthers was murdering East Coast Panthers. But the whole time these were agents infiltrating both organizations and murdering off each other. You see what I'm saying? Trying to get the leadership, trying to decapitate the leadership. You see what I'm saying? Potential leadership. Huey P. Newton. This is how they got to Huey P. Newton. The same way. Huey P. Huey P. Newton is, is, is the prime example of an individual who had the counterintelligence program ran on this brother, man. This is pure facts. This is how Huey, Huey P. Newton got put on drugs. This is how he got hooked on drugs. They sent agents to get him hooked on drugs so he can be in a state of always being high. To make him, to try to set him up to get assassinated. And do, and we do know eventually Huey P. Newton got assassinated in 1989. That, and they tried to make that. And that's another murder and another assassination that you should study that that that, that can point to you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That can show you the facts that Tupac Shakur was assassinated. When, when, Huey P. Newton, when Huey P. Newton was assassinated in Oakland in 1989, Black August, this was an orchestrated Cointel Pro assassination on Huey P. Newton. Pure facts. This is pure facts. Ran on his brother. Got him killed. Assassinated. When, they, when, he wasn't, when, they, when they didn't want him around no more, they got him murdered. They got him killed. Simple as that. Pure facts. Moving right along. Number six, the number six rule on assassination rules. 
eliminate the assassins and the witnesses. Let me repeat that again. The number six rule on assassination rules. Eliminate the assassin and eliminate witnesses. How many people have died since Tupac Shakur been assassinated? Who was who was who was around that time period around that day when this shooting took place on both sides of the fence? How many of these individuals are dead? From what I understand is the fact that several bodyguards of Tupac Shakur are now dead. Um, one of the most fam one of the most famous ones that you know of that was murdered was Frank Alexander, Tupac Shakur's main bodyguard. No longer here. When this brother tried to tell you to the truth and tried to put it out there on what happened to Tupac Shakur, this brother got murdered. No longer with us. Murdered. And several other brothers around that whole death row organization and that whole security team are now dead. Witnesses are now dead. Because this is a part of the strategy of Pro in the assassination rules. Eliminate the assassin and eliminate the witnesses. Matter of fact, the alleged shooter, the alleged assassin, Orlando Anderson, was murdered um, two years to three years after Tupac Shakur was murdered. Two years, matter of fact. Two years later, he's a, he's gone. So the assassin is now gone. Look at all the assassins throughout history that assassinated somebody that the government tried to get away with. Where is that assassin today? They're not in prison. They're dead. Eliminate the assassin so they can stick this narrative in your head and keep this narrative in your head oh this was just a random act of violence between ignorant street gang banging um tribes crips and bloods it was just a Crip, crips and bloods genocide you feel me Th that's how counterintelligence work people you see what i'm saying let me and let me go you let me throw another example in here let me throw another quick uh example in here let's go to malcolm x case Malcolm X case is another prime example of how counterintelligence program was ran on Malcolm X. You see how you see how J. Edgar Hoover, and this is we must state this for the fact: the Nation of Islam was infiltrated by FBI agents. This is pure facts. Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, most of their members, most of their congregation was FBI agents. And why am I making this point? Death Row Records. The Southside Crips, the Mob Pyrus were all infiltrated by LAPD, Compton PD, and FBI agents. This is pure facts, people. And you need to go get this book. Go get this book. FBI War on Tupac Shakur and Black Leaders. So all this information that I'm I'm, I'm speaking of, you can go. You can go, you know what I'm saying, do this research yourself and see everything that I'm talking about in this book right here. I'm always going to display this book because this is the best put together work to explain what happened to Tupac Shakur that day when he was assassinated. This is the best work out by John Potash. And I try to, and this is the crazy thing about it, people. I try to tell so many brothers and sisters and even gang members to get this book. They won't even go get the book. They so indoctrinated on this gang, this this gang theory that Tupac was gang banging. You see what I'm saying? They so brainwashed and stuck on this theory. They don't want to go get the book. They don't want the evidence. They don't want the evidence from people who know what they're talking about. You feel me? Because they just wanted to keep it stuck in the in the theory of ignorance of 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 you know random acts of violence. Tupac Shakur was just randomly killed because he stomped out a crib. Bullshit. And so let's eliminate that theory also. Because I get this question all the time also. Was Tupac Shakur a mob Pyru? Did Tupac Shakur join the Pyru blood gang? No, he did not. I don't care how many mob Pyrus state that. I don't care how many rappers state that. Tupac Shakur never joined the gang. Never joined the gang. Now, did he show these brothers and sisters love? Did he take these brothers and sisters in? Did those brothers and sisters take Tupac Shakur in as family? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Tupac Shakur loved these brothers and sisters. Just like these brothers and sisters loved Tupac Shakur. So that's why he was so heavily affiliated with the Mob Pyrus. You see what I'm saying? But did he die over a Mob Pyrus 
and Crip beef? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. They used the blood and Crip beef to assassinate this brother. Facts. And how do we know this? Because like I just told you, Death Row and the Southside Crips and the Mob Paru were infiltrated by FBI agents. This is pure facts, man. This is what people don't want to talk about, people. They don't want to talk about the infiltration of the FBI, LAPD, um, Compton PD, infiltrated. It was agents all in Death Row Records, man. This is pure facts. Agents was running all through Death Row. Shit, hell. They even saying that the head of Death Row Records was an FBI agent. You feel me? They even saying Suge Knight was an FBI agent. So, hey, you know what I mean? This organization was heavily infiltrated by LAPD, Compton PD, and the FBI agents. And even on the night of the murder, this is something you need to go research yourself. Even on the night of the murder, the entourages, Death Row Entourage had LAPD, undercover LAPD, and undercover FBI agents in their entourage. See what I'm saying? And then take it to a whole nother level. Why was this entourage in its security? Why was the weapons taken off of this off of the security team? You can go look up this information. Every bodyguard stated that their weapons was taken from them. That's signs of assassination. If you know, and this is the thing about it, if you know that you're feuding, if, if, if it is a so-called gang theory and it's a so-called gang war going on, and we had this hip hop feud going on and we know that it's a lot of chaos going on. It's a lot of beef going on with Death Row and a lot of other artists and other organizations. And you in Vegas, one of the hottest spots in America, you see what I'm saying? To easily, you know what I'm saying, run into somebody to, you know, be, a, you know, targeted of a shooting. Why did they take the guns off of the bodyguards, man? Come on, use your mind. Don't let these fools play with your mind. Why did they take the weapons off of the security team? The security team had no weapons. That's signs of assassination. They had no weapons. Tupac Shakur's bodyguard had no weapons. They took this man's gun. Before they left that night, they took their guns. They had no guns in Vegas. You see what I'm saying? And then their entourage had undercover police officers in it. Matter in fact, if you don't know by now, and you need to know by now, the so-called, and, and this is a key point that I wanted to point out from the jump, is that the guy that, that came up with this whole gang theory, the guy that's the uncle of the alleged shooter, that came up with this, you know, theory like, oh yeah, we was the ones that murdered Tupac, we did this, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 he told the whole story for immunity. He told the whole LAPD, he told the LAPD this whole concocted gang shooting of Tupac Shakur theory based off him getting immunity so he wouldn't do life in prison for being caught with drugs and weapons. So his, this is my whole point. When it comes to snitches, rats, and informants, this man's word is not reliable. A snitch and an agent's word is not reliable. This guy, and you know who he is, Keefe D. He got all the inf he got all these interviews on Vlad TV right now. And Vlad TV, oh snitch ass, he keep interviewing snitches. You see what I'm saying? I believe Vlad TV is a counterintelligence uh media, a CIA media. I definitely believe Vlad TV is a CIA media. You see what I'm saying? Why is he interviewing a well-known informant and a well-known rat, Keefe D? So we know, so I'm not even taking KVD word as reliable. I take no snitch, no informant word as reliable. When you were fighting for your life, this cat was fighting for his life. Three strikes. He struck out three times. This was his third strike. The LAPD was going to put this, the Compton PD and LAPD was going to put this man away for life. He comes out at the last minute with this concocted story that him and his crew murdered Tupac. You see what I'm saying? So if he's an agent, he's a rat, he's a snitch. That means every nigga that was in that car was a rat, snitch, and an agent. And there were patsies that were sent to Vegas to assassinate Tupac Shakur that night. Facts. Pure facts. Pure facts. Pure facts. Agents were everywhere that night. The FBI were surveilling Tupac Shakur that night. FBI watched Tupac Shakur get assassinated that night. 
FBI watched Biggie Smalls get assassinated in L.A. Collateral damage. That, and all those blood, all those bloods and crips that were murdered after the assassinated Tupac Shakur were innocent collateral damage. To make it look like something that it wasn't. To make it look like a random act of violence. All those innocent bloods. Well, I ain't going to say too much of them was innocent because a lot of them dealt in criminality. But a lot of gang members died for no reason. To orchestrate it, to make it look like the Tupac Shakur murder was a gangbanging street murder. Facts. When the whole time, it was an opportune opportunity for the government to assassinate Tupac Shakur. Because Tupac Shakur was the most popular um, artist. He was the biggest artist. He was the bigger figure. He, matter of fact, in 1996, Tupac Shakur was the most number one. He was the number one artist and number one figure in America at the time. And he was a person that had a message. He came from a movement. You see what I'm saying? He was starting to develop and start to, you know what I'm saying, uh, become a threat to this government. Because we already know J. Edgar Hoover. We know what he said. We know what he stated. We have to prevent the rise of a black messiah. We have to prevent it. So this is the thing people don't know about counterintelligence in the FBI. Anybody that's a threat to the American government, the United States government, and, and is a powerful and a powerful figure and a powerful head to uplift his people to freedom, to liberation, and to go against the corrupt and privileged government of the United States of America, they have to assassinate him. If they have a voice, they have to assassinate him. Tupac already had a counterintelligence file. He already had an FBI file. You can go online right now and pull up Tupac Shakur's FBI file right now. Where they showed Tupac Shakur was getting death threats his whole career. Once he became famous, he was either he was either a victim of an attack by the government and their law enforcement, or he was getting death threats from um secret counterintelligence agencies who used to call Tupac Shakur all the time saying that they was gonna kill him. Who you think Tupac Shakur used to say? You used to hear Tupac say this shit on record all the time. Like, I know they after me. I know they trying to get me. I know they want to kill me. Why, why Tupac kept saying that? On, on most of some of his most best records, some of his, mo even in interviews, Tupac Shakur told you that the FBI was watching him. They was watching him because he was a Shakur. He had an FBI profile since the age, well, shit. Ever since he was born, he had an FBI profile. Because y'all don't understand how the FBI and counterintelligence work. They profile any anybody that's a descendant, a child, an offspring of any type of revolutionary or a revolutionary family or any revolutionary movement that's birthing these individuals. They have FBI counterintelligence files. Because they have to study these individuals and watch these individuals their whole life. Facts. They even watched the Feeney all the way until she died. Facts. And as you see, they still trying to get Asada Shakur today. The government still trying to get Asada. Till this day. Exactly. That's why. Exactly, my brother. Exactly. Listen to what James Howell just said. A lot of people didn't even get the message behind why Tupac Shakur called his record All Eyes on Me. Come on. It gets no more subliminal than that. The brother was telling you. The brother told you. All Eyes on Me. He wasn't just saying that because he was the hottest rapper. He wasn't. That wasn't why he, why he named that album that. He got several songs on All Eyes on Me talking about the counterintelligence program. Watching him. FBI watching him. Come on, man. The brother, the brother told you. He was telling you over and over that they was trying to kill him. They was trying to assassinate him. Matter of fact, he even made a statement to a couple of individuals before he died. Before that day that I'm a walking dead man. I.E. what that I.E. Eerie, what that reminds you of. Who else said that they was a walking dead man? Elijah, I mean, El Hajj Malik, Malcolm X, Shabazz. Didn't Malcolm say he was a dead man right before he was assassinated? See, you have to look at all the coincidences and all the same, um, the same, how the same thing took place and the same things were being said even all the way up in Tupac Shakur's assassination, man. Same, the same thing happened with Malcolm X. Look at the Malcolm X thing. 
how the counterintelligence program used some FBI agents that infiltrated the nation of Islam to start a feud. Look, it's the same thing with the East Coast, West Coast rap war beef. The same thing with the East Coast, West Coast um, Black Panther beef. They did the same thing with Malcolm X in the Nation of Islam. Now, it was Malcolm X organization versus the Nation of Islam. They were beefing. They were trying to kill each other. Da, 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 da. They sent their agents into the, um, into the, um, what you call it, the auto ball room and murdered Malcolm X in cold blood in front of his family. FBI agents. Because these brothers wasn't, they, was, they wasn't strictly um, Nation of Islam members. These were patsies. These were, these were FBI agents that murdered, uh, Malcolm X. That's what I'm saying. These agent provocateurs. That's what Orlando Anderson was. That's what Keefe D is today. An agent provocateur. So, man, we're not going to let Tupac Shakur's death and transition be, be belittled to a gang feud, a gang murder. No, Tupac Shakur wasn't gang banging. Tupac Shakur never gang banged. Never gang banged. Tupac Shakur fell victim to an assassination that was orchestrated by the United States of America's government and the FBI. Facts. Don't y'all remember like a year or two ago um, when the FBI Twitter account, you know what I'm saying? And the FBI Twitter account tried to say that their account got hacked and on that, and they, and they tweeted out a cryptic message that said they don't know where Tupac Shakur is or they didn't know if Tupac Shakur was alive or not. Remember that tweet? Go Google it. And go Google um, Tupac Shakur FBI files. And you can see where the Jewish, um, um, what what they call it, the Jewish ADL, the Jewish ADL League was trying to assassinate Tupac Shakur. Go look that up. The Jewish League. And they was trying to assassinate EZ in the early 90s. And we all know what happened to EZ. We know EZ was injected with AIDS. None of this, this ain't no conspiracy theory bullshit. I ain't talking on no conspiracy theory. This, this shit is based on scientific facts that you can do this research on your own. So don't let these rappers and these hip hop artists who trying to exploit, you see what I'm saying, Tupac Shakur name or whatever, you feel me? Um, keep trying to indoctrinate, indoctrinate you with these bullshit theories, man. On some gang shit. It wasn't no gang shit, man. Tupac Shakur was assassinated. And we're going to continue to put that message out there to make to make all generations that come after us understand what happened to Tupac Shakur. You see what I'm saying? Tupac Shakur, a man, if Tupac Shakur would have got money, Tupac Shakur was starting to get his money up. You think he wasn't dangerous to the American government? Sure he was. He was a Shakur. Tupac stated that before he was assassinated. They're going to kill me because I'm a Shakur. They're going to kill me. They coming to get me. And they got him with an orchestrated Quintel operation that they orchestrated to make it look like a gang, a gang murder, a gang, a, a random act of gang violence. Pure facts, man. Tupac Shakur was befriending a lot of street tribe members, a lot of street gangs. Tupac Shakur was always in L.A. He been in California for years. When he moved to California, he was always be befriending street tribe members and trying to hip them to the game of the movement. Facts. Big sight. Rest in peace. All these individuals. Um, shout out to my brother Rated R that's still locked up. You see what I'm saying? That was a part of Thug Life. Another, another street tribe member, a crip. He politicized all these brothers. He was politicizing them opening their eyes to the bigger picture. That's why when you've seen Big Psych and the way these brothers that was around Tupac, the way they could articulate themselves, you see what I'm saying? They was articulating themselves better than the average crip, the average blood, because Tupac Shakur was politicizing these brothers and sisters in the street tribes, man. Because Tupac know that we needed these street tribes. This is where the thug life and the thug code come from. Still one of the most revolutionary important documents to this day is the thug life code. Go go look up the thug life code. Download the, th the thug life code. And, and, and check out Tupac Shakur around the time of the L.A. riots. What was Tupac Shakur doing around the time of the L.A. riots? Trying to organize his brothers and sisters in street tribes. And that mission still continue. You see what I'm saying? We're still trying to do that. That mission still continue. The mission ain't over. You see what I'm saying? We're trying to bring these brothers together, but they have to be politicized. You feel me? So as, as I close this video, before I close this video, let me say this about, my, you know, in closing to the Glass of Malone new video. 
Do I like the video? Do I like the song? I love my brother Glass Malone. You see what I'm saying? I fuck with Glasses Malone hard. We have some of the most deepest conversations offline, bro. You know what I'm saying? He one of the dopest concept writers, um, hip hop artists ever. But I just think he made a mistake by putting that record out with that title. And I and I and and and, and the message I want to send to him is that and all artists, based on what Asada Shakur said, is this is that. I felt this was an opportune time for the brother Glass Malone to put together a, a dope, a dope project um, um, surrounded and offer that song that could have took this conversation to a whole nother level, man. We could have took, we could have used this opportunity to build this conversation to a whole nother level when it comes to the, you know, the assassination of Tupac Shakur and all our great brothers and sisters. Nipsey also too, man. Throw Nipsey also in there too. We could have. This was an opportune time for him to 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 do that project right, so we can so we can put this information out here about the counterintelligence program, our political prisoners that still locked up behind the counterintelligence program, to put the real truth on what happened to Tupac Shakur out. You feel me? Instead of just keep running with this raggedy gang theory and this regular gang story. You feel me? No, this was an opportune time. For us to, to take this conversation to another level. And we can still take this conversation to another level. I hope the brothers see this live video. And I'm pretty sure, because I'm going to give him my same opinion when I talk to the brother offline. He's going to hear the same thing I'm telling y'all today right now. He's going he gonna to get this work. Iron shopping iron. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to get off this live. In closing, man. Tupac Shakur was assassinated. He wasn't murdered. And, you know... Shout out to everybody that was on this live, man. If I went over too long, I apologize. I didn't really want to make it too long. But, hey, this is my my critical, you know what I'm saying, response to you, Glasses Malone. Let's take this conversation to another level, bro. You feel me? Shout out to that brother. I don't think that brother was trying to diss Tupac. Uh, it came off wrong. He shouldn't have named the song that. And I think he still should, ch he should change the name of the song now. It ain't too late. I think he should change the, the, the name of the song now or either come out and make a statement. You see what I'm saying? Instead of just trying to, you know, run with it, you know what I'm saying, for clickbait, you know what I'm saying, to promote promote the record. And you know what I'm saying? You know, it is what it is, man. Art, 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 art is not made to make people comfortable. You feel me? But also we got to understand it's a duty for us to put the proper context and respect out for, like I always tell you, the best of us, when these individuals represent the best of us, like Tupac Shakur, man, you got to put it out in a proper context. Stop disrespecting uh, the best of us legacies. You see what I'm saying? Because all you're doing is helping the white man to keep this jacket on these great brothers and sisters back to make them look like, oh, yeah, they were, he was just, he won't number just another thug. He won't number just another person gang banging. No, bro, we know what the government did to Tupac Shakur, man. So I'm going to sign off on that note. Hockey Quaddy Shakur, man. Uh, free to land by any means necessary.